You are listening to a Redeemed Christian Fellowship podcast produced by Hearing Heart Multimedia in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope this message is an encouragement to your faith and brings insight through the Word of God in your pursuit of God's perfect plan for your life. Please find us online and social media at Redeemed Christian Fellowship for additional broadcast and ministry resources. Hello, this is uh, Pastor Walter Martinez. I'm here with Brad Cutliff, uh, God's anointed, uh, blessed, favorite of God. Um, today we're going to be teaching on the anointing. I think last week, last week, I can't remember what day it came on, the podcast came on, but we were teaching, on, we started on the purpose of the anointing, I think that's what it was called. Uh, but now we're going to be talking about the anointing to stand in a particular office or ministry. Uh, in the Old Testament, uh, God anointed people to stand in three uh, particular offices. The first one was the office of a priest, then the office of a king, and then the office of a prophet. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you, uh, In Exodus chapter 40, verse 13, and I'm not really sure if we should read all these, but I'll read them anyways because they're here. It says, And thou shalt put uh, upon Aaron uh, holy garments and anoint him and sanctify him that he may minister to me in the priest's office. Um, so notice he was anointed. And when it says, and anoint him, they're, they're talking about anointing him with oil. That's right. Uh, in in uh, Second Kings 19, uh, na- that was a priest's office, of course. Mm-hmm. In Second Kings um, 1915, in reference to the king's office, it says, And the Lord said unto them, Go, return un- unto thy way, to the wilderness of Damascus, and when thou comest, anoint Hazel, uh, I don't know how you pronounce that, to be king over Syria. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and then uh, that's, notice how he says, anoint this person to be mm-hmm. king over right. Syria. Uh, Syria. Uh, and, then, uh, and then in verse, nine, verse 16, of uh, the same portion of scripture, it says, and it goes on, lists all these names, which is it South Al anoint to be king over Israel, and and Elisha, the son of Saphat, and it goes on and on, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you see the three different offices there, and you can see the relationship there with the anointing. They were all they all had anointing oil poured on them, right. which represented the Holy Spirit coming upon them to stand in a particular office. That's right. Amen. Now, it's important to understand that this is done by spiritual insight. It uh, is. Amen. Uh, this is not something that man chooses. This is not some because you know you favor or, or anything like that. It's right. because you can see a real anointing on them, and it's, it bears witness with your spirit right. by the Holy Spirit. Um, so... Uh, we're using the word office here to describe an, ord- an ordained responsibility to function or function that comes with special endowments that operate within the sphere of that office, responsibility or function. <coughs> like, for instance, the office of a prophet. Uh, those people, uh, in order to be a prophet, then you'd have to function in at least three gifts or maybe two, but up to three. Mm -hmm. And that is the word of uh, wisdom, the word of knowledge, and discernment of spirits. These are called, um, uh, what kind of gifts are these? These are called the gifts that reveal something. Revelation gifts. Revelation gifts. And so, um, so you have to at least operate at least two. Now there's degrees of these offices, so. That's right. uh, But there's also gifts that are attached to this. like, for instance, Elisha walked in God's healing power. Right. And uh, so we see that that was a gift that was attached to his office mm-hmm. to confirm that he was a prophet. That's right. Um, Amen. Along with the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and discerning the spirit. Mm-hmm. Which, when you, when you talk about the word of wisdom, you're talking about the future. Right. God revealing the future through the prophet, uh, or a person's future through the prophet, or the nation, or the 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 future of a nation um, right. or even um, uh, the concept of uh, 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 that's that's the word of wisdom 
talking about future events. The Bird of Knowledge is talking about present and past events. Mm -hmm. uh, these are events that the prophet or the minister of God's word is unfamiliar with. Right. Uh, and then uh, discerning the spirits is being able to see in the spirit world uh, and be able to be able to judge a spirit to see uh, what nature it is, uh, what nature right. it, it is uh, motivated by or prompted by or whatever. That's right. Or whether yeah. it's angelic, whether it's demonic, or, or whether it's a human, human spirit, spirit or whatever. Uh, so that kind of captures, in essence, the functions of a of a of a of a, the prophet's office. The king's office is a little bit different because because the king's office can also have different gifts attached to it, but its main function is to govern. Right. Uh, and then the priest uh, office is completely different because uh, they function in the con in the idea of bringing mercy uh, and forgiveness to God's people through mm -hmm. their functions, through their right. main functions. That's good. Amen. And, uh, and the going to the holies of holies and things like that, which we won't discuss at this time. Uh, but anyways... Uh, uh, these are special endowments. Um, uh, these are supernatural, mm -hmm. and they are triggered whenever a person assigned to that office begins to stand or function in that office. That's right, amen. So, for instance, um, I can, because I'm a pastor, uh, I can, I can, uh, if someone calls me and needs help, or if someone calls me and needs advice, uh, or if someone calls me and is in trouble, uh, automatically, uh, I'll s without without uh, it's it's so spontaneous mm -hmm. that it's amazing. But I, I automatically, I go from being an average person to a pastor. Right. I say things, I do things, I function in certain gifts that. You cannot function as a natural or, right. or, or a regular individual. Uh, why? Because the office of the pastor comes with certain gifts, like all the offices do, in order to confirm that they're in these offices. That's right. So well, what does a pastor do? Well, a pastor shepherds. Mm -hmm. That means he leads and he guides God's people. Amen. Uh, he serves more like, in this essence, like a compass showing the way to go, the right way to go. Amen. Uh, and in that, there's protection, uh, there's deliverance, uh, pretty much like a shepherd would, a uh, sheep would be to a shepherd. Right. Or a shepherd would be to a sheep, I guess. Mm -hmm. All the things... Overseeing, the, guiding, leading, protecting, right? Right. Absolutely. Right. And, and uh, with that, like, I mean, there's, like, with, with me, uh, there's sometimes... Uh, gifts of healing that will pop up mm -hmm. to confirm that office, or counseling. Spirit of a counsel, the counselor will come on you. Strong, it's strong. <laughs> it's very strong on you. That's one of the strongest <laughs> Amen. ones. It is. Uh, so that is, you know, that is part of the pastoral office, anyways, or at least it should be. Right. Amen. And it just really depends on how much you give yourself over to the anointing. But there are certain gifts and certain uh, things that operate in a pastor's office that won't operate in nobody in, in other offices. That's right. Uh, <coughs> except for maybe the prophet's office, or not the prophet's office, but the apostolic or apostle's office. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, um, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Uh, that is because the anointing oil, we're talking about the anointing oil of the, of these Old Testament prophets, how they were anointed with oil which signified that they had been chosen by God, selected, personally selected by God to stand in a particular office mm -hmm. or stand in that office. Uh, 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 the, the anointing oil was a type. That's right. The type never replaces what it represents. Amen. And it represented the Holy Ghost coming upon an individual in order to function in a certain office with certain gifts. Right. Uh, uh, offices or ministries or ministries are anointed and selected the same way by God, uh, all, uh, although man's involvement has changed somewhat. Now we're talking about the transformation from Old Testament to mm -hmm. New Testament. In the New Testament, instead of using 
anointing oil, the laying on of hands in prayer, was adopted to acknowledge that the Spirit of God had come upon someone to stand in a particular office. That's right. And that was usually done, the laying on of hands was usually done by a group of presbytery, which meant mm -hmm. the group of elders. Right. Which the church was so young uh, that a group of elders, elders could be consist of uh, uh, prophets, mm -hmm. teachers, pastors, right. or whatever you might have it. They're all considered elders. Uh, so these elders would come together and the Lord would inform them uh, then through supernatural means mm -hmm. that these individuals would stand in a particular office. And we'll cover that here in a little bit. Amen. But uh, it was done through the laying on of hands. Um, God is so good. Um, thank you, Lord Jesus. Whoa, I just did something I shouldn't have done. <laughs> there you go. That's funny. Jumped right out, jumped right back in. Jumped out, jumped it. back in. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Uh, the practice of laying on of hands on someone to ordain them to stand in a particular office served as confirmation to the people that God had made His mm -hmm. choice pertaining to that particular office which meant they were anointed to stand in ministry. Now, here's the danger. People anointing themselves right. to stand in a particular office they're not in. That's right. Uh, it happens often. It happens often. Too often, unfortunately. Yes. So, the important thing is, is don't advertise your gifts. Mm -hmm. Let God reveal them yes, amen. to the presbytery, to amen. the elders. Uh, if you want to do it correctly. Right. There's too many Lone Ranger type ministries out there that aren't submitted to anything right. or anyone or any church. If they can't be submitted to a church, then how can they be submitted to Christ? Mm -hmm. It's a little bit difficult. That's true. Um, Amen. So anyways, uh, the laying on of hands for service and ministry. Let's go to Acts 6.6. 6. This is talking about um, uh, uh, at the time when when uh, when the apostles uh, selected, I believe it was seven men, were asked asked the congregation to select seven men among them. Mm -hmm. I think it was seven uh, uh, to do the work of the ministry mm -hmm. because right. they wanted to spend their time or needed to spend their time uh, uh, prayer in, in prayer and in the Word. Mm -hmm. um, so just to give you a little bit of history of, of Acts six six, it says, and when it came to these people, it says. It says, after the people had selected them, they were full of wisdom and full of the Holy Ghost. Remember that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then it says, uh, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed and laid their hands on them. Mm -hmm. And see, notice we're starting to see that transformation from the pouring of oil right. to the laying on of hands. From right. Old Testament to New Testament. So in the New Testament, I haven't read where oil was poured over anyone to signify they were standing in, in right. a particular office. It was always through laying on hands or, you know, or something like that, mm -hmm. or through prayer. Uh, in, in Acts 13, verses 2 and 3, it says, And as, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, uh, this is a good one right here, mm -hmm. as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, uh, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas, and saw for the work whereunto I have called mm -hmm. them. And when they had prayed, and when they had fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them uh, uh, and sent them away. Mm -hmm. uh, this is talking about uh, the leadership of the church. Right. And they came together to minister to the Lord. So it was a private meeting of the, of the, of the, of the leadership of the church and they came together uh, just to pray and to fast. And while they were doing that, the Holy Ghost said, separate me. Mm -hmm. And now the confirmation is, they're all there, they're all getting the same thing. Mm -hmm. So what do they do? They lay hands on them and they send them out. Right. Indicating that these n individuals are now standing in the office, in this case it was the office of apostles. Mm -hmm. Uh, Amen. That's so, right. so now there, uh, uh, it was uh, Barnabas and Saul, which became Paul. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because the next time you hear about uh, Barnabas and Saul, it talks about Barnabas, but now Saul has become Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So, and at that point, he's never called Saul again. Right. It's always Paul. Um, interesting. Amen. And, uh, uh, do you want to add some stuff here? Or what do you want to do? No, I think you're you're, you're right on track, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> in in First Timothy chapter four, verse uh, fourteen, it says, "Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was." Uh, which uh, was given thee mm-hmm. by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the presbytery. Mm-hmm. And here it comes right down to it, doesn't it? He says, neglect not the gift that is in thee. Amen. In other words, God has endowed him with certain gifts, right. has anointed him to stand in a particular office, That's right. and the Apostle Paul says, don't neglect that gift mm-hmm. uh, because it was given to you by prophecy. In other words, it, see, what we have to understand is when the prophecy came forth, the prophecy uh, through supernatural uh, means, through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, mm-hmm. the Holy Ghost was saying, Timothy is the pastor of this church. Mm-hmm. That's right. And so, uh, and I'm just boiling that down. It doesn't actually say that, but that's what sure. it's representing there. That's right. Um, uh, so neglect not the gift that is in thee, which is given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of hands by the presbytery. So who are the presbytery? It's these prophets, these teachers, these pastors, mm-hmm. these apostles, these ministers that have come together and pray. That's right. They are the presbytery. Amen. They are the leadership of the church. It's so important that our gift is recognized by those in the church. Mm-hmm. Amen. Glory be to God. Thank Amen. you, Lord Jesus. Uh, so now let's talk about uh, not everybody's a prophet. Not everybody's a teacher. Not everybody's a, a pastor. Not everybody's an evangelist. Not everybody's an apostle. That's right. Uh, this was something that was given to certain individuals in order to uh, to uh, equip the body of Christ. Right. Uh, so in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12, you, you want to read that for me? Yes, sir. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Verse 12, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And there you have the reason why. But notice what it says, why they were all uh, given these, these offices were placed in these offices. Uh, it was for, for the perfecting of the right. saints, which is the equipping of the saints, mm-hmm. and for the work of the ministry. And then again, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So you see three things here. Mm-hmm. Um, but also notice that it says, he gave some. So some indicates some. That's right. Not all. Not all. But some. So not everybody can be a prophet. Not everybody can be right. a teacher. Not every. When someone's anointed to teach, you can tell they're anointed to teach. Right. Right? You can tell it. Uh, when someone's anointed to pastor, you can tell they're anointed to pastor. When there's an evangelist anointed to, to, to be an evangelist, you can tell they're anointed mm-hmm. uh, to be an evangelist. Mm-hmm. They don't have to do, you know, all the things you would do in the natural, like, you know plays and concerts because because the anointing is there Amen. to to draw the people in. So right. Miracle signs and wonders. Yeah, well and there's, such a, there's such a difference mm-hmm. between what an evangelist is trying to do today and the evangelist that we see in the in the Bible, which mm-hmm. we only see one time. One person that is called an evangelist, I believe that was Philip, mm-hmm. uh, and he wasn't even an evangelist then at that time. That we see that he he uh, he functioned in miracles, signs, and wonders when he preached the gospel of the that's Lord right. Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, uh, so that's close as we get to the the what is going on in the evangelist ministry. He is there to win people over to Jesus, mm-hmm. and he does it through certain gifts, gifts of healing. That's right. And, and so on, different miracles of the Holy Ghost, mm-hmm. which convince <coughs> people of the message. That's right. It confirms the authenticity of the message of That's the Lord good. Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, you want to read? Um, 
Uh, did we read that already? We read Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. Let's read Ephesians chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. Till we all come, <clears throat> excuse me, in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they, they lie in wait to deceive. There's a couple of things here. Um, first, if the church is doing their job, the people are constantly being born again mm -hmm. and developing. Amen. These three standards that are set up for us will not take place until Jesus returns. Mm -hmm. uh, another, uh, although we do understand that individuals, individually certain individuals in the body of Christ will achieve these standards, but not all. Mm -hmm. Now, it's also important to understand that um, uh, these these gifts. Uh, they're there to unify the body of Christ. That's right. It is so important that these gifts work together in full agreement with each other mm -hmm. to fulfill the will of God. Amen. Um, so that means that you have to have the same beliefs. Right. You have to. You have, and doctrinally speaking, you have to have the same beliefs. Amen. Now, the strength of that ministry is affected. Uh, well, let me say it like this. Let me say it like this. Uh, the anointing is the anointing. It will function because you've been placed in that office. Right. But the office that you're standing in will be uh, will have a greater impact if you stay in the Word. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, because, again, the anointing is the anointing. It will operate whether you're in the Word or not mm -hmm. to some degree. Right. You know. Uh, uh, I've seen ministers that their preaching and teaching could use a little bit of polishing mm -hmm. but man you cannot deny the anointing mm -hmm. it's there right you know uh, <laughs> so I used to tell people this and still do I got it from Kenneth Hagin I believe or somebody like that or at least I think I did <laughs> that follow my faith not my mistakes. Mm -hmm. Amen. So it's important that we all have different revelations and insights of the Word of God right. that we must stay unified. Amen. Uh, God is so good. Let's read Second Corinthians. Let's see, read First Corinthians um, 12, 27 through 28, if you don't mind. Yes, sir. Now, ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, this list is a little bit different than we find in Ephesians. Right. Uh, where it says that Jesus gave some. Mm -hmm. uh, here, it says... That God sets some. Mm -hmm. The concept is still the same. Right. Some, not all. Right. But there's a couple of different gifts here that are, are anointings here that people function in. Right. And throughout church history, we've seen this. Yes. Definitely, we've seen it in the life in ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The, uh, the concept of uh, miracles, mm -hmm. that's an office. Right. That will function in a minister's life. He will be anointed to operate in miracles. That's right. And there'll be others that are anointed with uh, an office of, 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 of healing. Right. Gifts of healings. Mm -hmm. And then there'll be others that will function in offices of health. Right. Which is more along the line of what people call an armor bearer these days. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then governments... Governments usually... Uh, usually represents or falls more in line with the pastoral office 
It doesn't have to be a pastoral office, mm -hmm. but the concept of someone in government is someone that is, that is raised up in the church or comes to the church with uh, with an anointing mm -hmm. to manage finances, right. manage uh, all the different structures of the church. That, that's not always the pastor, right? But it can be. Right. In in most cases, it, it is the pastor, but it doesn't have to be the pastor. Mm -hmm. The idea is look for the anointing. When God exactly. sends, they'll be anointed, and he, and he will reveal that to you. Mm -hmm. um, it's so important. God is so good. And then, and then, of course, there's also a ministry or an anointing um, for uh, diversities of tongues. Mm -hmm. And if we read the rest of the scriptures, it says, do all speak in tongues? Well, no, n not all stand in the office. That's, that's right. But all can, all speak, can in speak in tongues. tongues right. yeah, but this is talking about offices. Mm -hmm. In other words, an office is something that will operate more frequently within a church setting. Mm -hmm. And so That's good, when you have these type of ministries within your church, uh, then the Holy Ghost will make allowances for those gifts. Mm -hmm. uh, God is so good. Amen. Uh, so there's, there's these different offices. And let's not confuse this statement with do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Obviously, the question, the answer is no. Right. But this is not talking about uh, a prayer language. A prayer language. Mm -hmm. It's not talking about even prophesying. Right. We can all prophesy, as First Corinthians chapter fourteen mm -hmm. tells us. Uh, but uh, as a practice, but we can't all stand in the office right. of prophecy. Right. Or That's good. of I'm sorry of, uh, of, a of speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. uh, so God is so good. Amen. Uh, not some is not all. Again, not everyone is called or anointed to stand in a ministerial office. That is one of the gifts that are characterized in these two lists: First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse twenty-eight, and Ephesians four eleven. Uh, like in the Old Testament, God sets ministers in the church mm -hmm. with regards to with regards to the office or ministry gifts, some of the mistakes made by ministers and whatever office they're standing in is seeing things through a microscope in their office only. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is, is a lot of times a teacher will look at a preacher mm -hmm. or a uh, a, a minister that edifies mm -hmm. people through through the ministry of the word, builds them up to the ministry of the word, which is kind of like a preacher. Uh, they'll look at them like Jesse Duplantis would fall in this area of building people up mm -hmm. through his ministry. Uh, the problem is, is, is that if you're a teacher, you're going to look at a ministry like that and you're going to be judgmental because it's not a teaching ministry. Right. So right. you're going to be looking at that office and that ministry through your right. office. The lens of your office. That's and right, and not theirs. And that's where some of the mistakes are made. Mm -hmm. Not recognizing that people stand in different offices right. and that it's okay that their ministries are not the same. Right. The right. same thing with the teacher and the preacher. Mm -hmm. The preacher will look at the teacher and go, you're, you're, you're too line upon line, <laughs> uh, you know. Uh, and the, the, the teacher will look at the uh, uh, the preacher and go, man, you're too far out there. <laughs> you know, you're walking the line here. Right. Uh, and so, uh, it's because we don't understand the functions of every office. Right. So this, the the concept of this segment, it really was to introduce these different offices to some degree, mm -hmm. but so that we might be able to understand that that uh, every office is different. Don't look at another person's office through your eyes mm -hmm. or through your ministry right look at it as a whole right god has anointed different ministers to reach certain kinds of people that's right uh or to reach uh individuals that maybe your ministry would not reach right uh well so said. so uh they're all needed mm -hmm. and they're all there for mm -hmm. the edifying of the body of christ exactly. to equip the body of christ to edify the body of christ and, 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 and so on. So we all come in the unity of the faith. Until we all come in the unity of the Amen. faith. So it's very important that we honor other mm -hmm. office gifts. 
Right. Uh, and we get to know, and we get to learn how they function and what their, 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 their what their function is as a, as a minister that stands in a certain office mm -hmm. and the gifts that are attached to that. All right. Office. That's good. Um, anyways, I think we're out of time. Um, I, I apologize. I didn't give you more time to say something. No, it's fine, sir. But uh, uh, God is good. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Said it well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Amen. All right. God bless all of you. We love you. Appreciate you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May you stay healthy and prosperous in Jesus' name. Amen.